Okay, so welcome back to part two of my Valparaiso playthrough on defence. So the enemy team are dropping pretty quickly now, down to 13, 14 points, 12. That they're really on their last legs. And we felt pretty confident that we had this game in hand. We were like, yeah, we've managed to defend a few plants, a few attacks. They haven't got much left in them. And um, again, this is again <laughs> another rocket I should have had there. Um, this is another common mistake to make, and it happens a lot in Battlefield. And I think it's something that people really need to be aware of uh, with with Battlefield 3 coming on the way. If you're going into a game of Battlefield, you don't stop fighting, you don't stop taking it seriously until the, the round is finished, basically. And the reason for that is, <coughs> in COD, um, you can usually get a feel of a team of how they're going to play for most of the way through. They will either be really aggressive or they'll be very campy and they don't tend to deviate too much. You might get a few players who move around a little but for the most part it, it will stay fairly consistent. In Battlefield, what I find anyway, is that you'll have a much more fluid gameplay. Not every game. You'll get games where people are super camp and they never leave the spawn, or they're always aggressive and they're always on you and you can never get a stand. But I find, for the most part, you get a bit of give and take. They'll often start off very aggressive, and then when they find that it's not so easy, they'll calm down a little bit, which is pretty much what happened here. Um, and then what can happen is, at the end, they get low on, they get low on uh, hit points, or whatever it is, tickets, and they start to panic and they think, oh my god, we're going to lose, we're going to lose. And they start to throw everything they have at you. And that's pretty much what happened here. Um, we were feeling really confident. We had the base under control. We were like, yeah, no problem. Then all of a sudden, bang, a couple of guys are on A. We're trying to defuse A. The tank comes in. There's a couple of, there's more guys on B. They're planting all over the place. In, our, and our team was so calm from before that we didn't really know what was happening. And before you know it, the base is gone and it can happen that fast and that is why you have to be constantly aware and, and, and you know constantly able um, to be prepared to defend you need to have a good team watching staying calm and you know communicating uh, lack of communication is a really big problem if you don't see people coming in if you don't call out to your team I've got three guys coming in on A they're not going to know until it's too late and this is now you see where we start having some problems here see these guys they've already run up they've stealthed in they were ready they were ready to take it forward there's a guy right in here I'm on my own in the base I don't know where my team are at this point um, a couple of the guys on my team I think some were still down at the other base if you look at the map here our guys only come back up here right at the last second because they were still down in the other base <coughs> and um, the Blackhawk pilot on the other team is a, a much better Blackhawk pilot than they had at the start of the round. Um, they've also got a very, very good gunner as well. He's putting down targets all the time, um, and he's very accurate. And we see now a much stronger uh, enemy coming up to us, um, a much more uh, coordinated effort with tanks, Blackhawks all coming together and a real sense of disorganization and, and you know our team not really knowing where we're going to my main focus was to try and take the black hawk out because the black hawk was causing us so many problems in the air um, he's actually got countermeasures as his perk for the black hawk and you can see that it's extremely effective 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 it's extremely effective um, every time we're firing rockets at him you see right there that's actually my bad shooting but quite often you'll see that you know they just don't you know our rockets just don't go down on him so I decided to have a little crack at the tank here however he's uh, a bit more heavily armored than me um, again our team just getting dominated from the combined firepower of the tank and the Blackhawk <laughs> I was just saying about that Blackhawk pilot being really great but he actually crashed there <laughs> This is terrible for me, look. I should have, I mean, he sat right on top of me, how I missed it. Look, absolutely shocking that was. Also, I, I think I can see here um, a good example. If you look at B, they've taken the B building out completely, and that's where, that's where the, what I was saying earlier about double-edged sword of B coming in is, see how many of us now firing rockets at the Black Hawk, and we still can't get it. 
and then the tanks coming in behind us. We're, we're you know really taking a beating now. Um, but yeah, just to make that point, um, what I was saying before about opening buildings up and how it can be a double-edged sword, you could see at that base that they had opened both of the buildings up, which exposed the targets. Now, if they've already gotten planted, and they start opening the buildings up, and they have like, you know, vehicle support or any kind of heavy weapons nearby or snipers, that can be a really difficult situation because they can just keep putting fire on it, fire on it, and you can't de get it diffused. But that's where smoke comes in really handy. And as I've been saying, um, a lot of the time, smoke is a very, very underused um, part of battlefield. You don't see people using smoke often. You don't see it, you, them using it on vehicles so that enemies, you know, your guys can come up behind you. People don't put down smoke using the uh, assault rifles either. Um, but again, yeah, it can be useful to defend uh, using smoke if you want to defuse and you've got a lot of enemy firepower on you. Okay, now again, uh, the same situation is happening. Um, looking at our map, there's only two to three of our guys actually in the base here. Um, the rest of our team is still up at the other the other um, point, and they've just died. They're respawning behind now at our base, which is you see the markers down the end there. So. Basically, the point for these next few bases is that regrouping to your base really quickly is so important. And um, I just spotted a guy moving in here. I couldn't get a mark on him, though. Basically, our teams uh, don't regroup well enough. And th and when they do, they're not defending really the targets. They're moving up to, to attack the enemy. And you can look at that two ways. You can look at it as like, okay, they need to kill the enemy in order to stop them from getting into our base. But on the other hand, if we've already got enemy in the base, we need to clear them out before we start shooting back at the enemy. Um, because if they're already in our base, it doesn't make any sense to be pushing up the hill. Um, and I think that here, we, our, our team get our priorities a little bit wrong. As we can see, a couple of guys on my squad actually were up and picking up a tank. now. Again, you can look at that from two different ways. You can look at it as being, okay, great, because we do have a tank and we've managed to take it off of them. Um, but looking at it from a different point of view, as I say, we've already got like three or four guys in our base. And to be honest, the priority could be looked at as, as needing to take those guys out because they're already over the um, target. However, I know that I was telling my team that my priority for this was to take the Black Hawk out because it was putting so much damaging power onto us. Um, but I think as we see as the game goes along, my team is actually very good at defending. Um, when we've got everyone together, they're a good, good, good fighting team. Um, it just happened that they were getting their priorities wrong. And I think that that is a really important thing to remember about Battlefield, is that prioritizing what you're going to do in the game um, is a really important thing. Because a game of Battlefield can be so fluid that you may need to be defending hard at your base one moment and you may need to be pushing forward the next. So being aware of what's happening around you, being aware of where the team are, what they're using, what the enemy are doing, all of those things you have to be very very aware and you really can't solo. Um, you know, I mean there's some maps where you can go sniper or you can stealth into a base and pick things up, but for the most part, you you, re you need to be really team aware. You really need to be focused on what your team is doing, um, and react off of them. If you see three guys to the left, you need to stay on the right. If you you know don't bunch up, don't all push forward. If you see the rest of your team running in, it might be a bad idea to stay back. You know, as, as support in case they slip through. Uh, you know, you don't want no one in your base when the enemy are there. And as you can see here, same thing's happening again. No one in our base. We've only got three people in our base, including me. Uh, everyone else is down the road having a fight, and there's no one here to defend. So as you can see, the, these next two bases really badly defended. Um, our team are all over the place, lack of organisation. Um, but we'll see that things change up a little bit moving into the next round. So we're just going to call it here, and... Um, pick you up with the last one.